Praise the Lord, everyone. Hallelujah. God is great, and he is greatly to be praised. Amen. I'm Pastor Barbara Abraham, and I'm coming before you for Solid Rock Apostolic Faith Church. Amen. Amen. It's good to be here amongst you all coming for another Bible study. Amen. I hope you're ready for the Word of God on tonight. All right, so... We're going to say a short word of prayer, and then we're going to go into our Bible study. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come before you, thanking you for your grace, mercy, strength, your kindness. We thank you for what you have already done and that that you shall do. We ask that you will bless, Lord, and the word of God shall go forth, touch the ears of the hearers, cause them to hear the word of God, a heart to receive it, a mind to understand. Oh, God, in the heart to receive and to be obedient to the word of God. And we thank you for your grace right now. Have your way in this vessel. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So let us turn to the book of first John, first John, the second chapter, first John, the second chapter, verse 15 through 17, first John, the second chapter, verse 15 through 17. Amen. And our subject for tonight is love not the world. Love not the world. Amen. Love not the world. I think this is an on time word for the day that we're living in. Amen. Because we're not careful. We'll be so caught up. Amen. In this world system. And the Lord is telling us to love not the world. You have to wear this world like a loose garment, as I used to hear the older people say. Wear it like a loose garment, all right? Well, you can let this go at any given time, all right? And the things that's in the world, God doesn't want us to be holding on to them at all, all right? We're going to talk about those things as we get into the word on tonight. 1 John, the second chapter, verse 15 to 17. We're going to start with verse 15. I'm going to read the whole thing and come back up. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Now, I, I do doubt whether or not we're going to actually get through this entire lesson tonight. Probably not. If we do, I might be a little surprised. Amen. So, verse 15 Love not the world. Love not the world. This present world, the world system, which is against the will of God. Love not the world. And it goes on to say, neither the things that are in the world. So let's talk about that loving the world loving not the world, and how we have to manifest not loving the world, and what we need to do so that we are not caught up in that trap. Because we need to not love this world's system. But there are some requirements that the Lord has uh, for you and I, and, and that we're showing that we do not love the world. All right? So let's go to the book of Romans. We'll go to the book of Romans, the 12th chapter. There's some things that we need to do so that we can make sure that we're not caught up in the trap of loving the world. That 12th chapter of Romans, verse 1 and 2. The Bible says, I beseech ye therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, 
that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, and they said be holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. But look at this. And be not conformed to the world. All right? Don't fit in the mold of the world. Don't become like the world. What the world want you to do. What the world wants you to dress like. What the world wants you to look like. How the world wants you to act. How they want you to walk and how they want you to talk. The Bible says, be not conformed. All right? When you conform to something, you take the shape of that thing. All right? We're in the world, but we are not of the world as the people of God. You're in the world, but you're not of the world. You don't take on the shape of the world. The Lord has brought us out of the world of darkness and brought us into his marvelous light. So we have to be conformed, be not conformed to this world. All right? We cannot afford to take on the shape of this world in our lives. We can't think like the world. We can't walk like the world, talk like the world, do like the world. You can't dress in a worldly manner. All right? All right? Some things is just not for the people of God. And I know people say it's not about what's on the outside. No, it, it's about what's on the inside, but what's on the inside comes on the outside. All right? So, we still need to dress holy. We still need to dress holy. Modest. All right? Not provocative. Not provocative. We need to dress modest. Amen. Not showing our cleavage. Your cleavage should be closed up. Modesty is not showing your cleavage. That's not what a child of God should be doing. That's seductive. And we're not supposed to be being seductive. That's fleshly. I want somebody to look up here upon our flesh. And, if, and to think of the wrong kind of things appearing upon the flesh. That's alluring. So that shouldn't be done by the saints of God. But we don't bear it over into some things that we shouldn't even be bearing over into. Love not the world, neither the things of the world. That's the world system of doing things. We're trying, to, we're trying to be saved. We want our brethren to be saved. We want them to be godly minded. And it's hard to be godly minded looking at your cleavage. That doesn't matter that they saved. They still human beings. They men. And we are our brother's keeper. All right. So I beseech you, therefore, by the mercies of God. Let me present your body. You got to give your body over to the Lord. It needs to be holy. It needs to be acceptable. Unto him. That's only our reasonable service. We're not doing no God no favor. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. Look, look at what God has to say here. He says, be transformed, not conformed. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. You got to be transformed. And that takes place in the mind. In the mind. By the renewing of our minds. Because when we come to the Lord... As one of our former pastors used to say, you're still 99.9% .9 carnal. You have to learn the word of God. You have to learn the word of God. And you learn the word of God. You be cleansed as you go through the word of God. Amen. And you learn how to lay aside every weight and the sin that do so easily beset you. You learn how to lay aside that fleshy and that carnal mindedness which is a part of the world, a part of the world system that goes against the will of God. And so your flesh want to connect with that. And we're going to talk about the flesh too. Everybody's flesh. Ain't nobody flesh saved. Nobody's flesh. Nobody's flesh is saved. All right? When God saved you, he didn't save your flesh. Hallelujah. And your flesh still trying to get in cahoots with the devil because your flesh and the devil are friends. All right? And you got to keep them two separated. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you the truth because it's going to destroy you if you don't. So be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And this is why. 
The only way you're going to be able to do this right here is you must have a transformation of mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The only way you're going to be able to prove the good, acceptable, perfect will of God is to have a transformation of the mind. A worldly mind will not be able to prove the goodness of God, will not be able to prove the perfection of God uh, and the acceptability of the will of God. You can't do that with the worldly mindset. And I'm going to go back to this. You know, it's a song, amen, that they used to sing uh, some years ago. But anyway, the song says, you can't do right with a do wrong mind. Now, you might do the right thing for a little bit, but you also have to remember that God is looking at your heart. So you can't fool him, you know, because sometimes people try to fool people by doing certain things when it's really not in their heart. And God is going to judge that, all right, because he knows what the intent is. The word of God is, is a discerner of the very intent of your heart and of your thoughts. It, it gets in there. It gets in there. The word just gets in there. See, the Lord wants to transform, all right, change us. He wants to change you. No, no, no. He wants to change you. The world wants to conform you and make you fit where they want you to fit. But God said, no, I need you to change, completely change from what you was into something different. From the child of the devil to the child of God. Uh-huh. And it happens, listen to me, that transformation has got to happen up here. It has to happen in your mind because nothing changes if your mind don't change. In order for you to change, your mind has to change. In order for me to change, my mind has to change. Nothing changes until you change your mind or allow God to change your mind. You have to allow God to change your mind. All right? So let's move on. To the book of Galatians, the sixth chapter. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Galatians, the sixth chapter, verse 13 and 14. For neither they themselves... Who are circumcised keep the law, but desire to have you circumcised, and listen at why they wanted to have the people circumcised, that they may glory in your flesh. All right, because you know that's supposed to have been the big thing, you know, the circumcision of the flesh, which was a sign of the covenant uh, between God and Israel. And so people that were circumcised were supposed to be living a life of circumcision, a life that pleased the Lord, but they were not living the life. And so Paul was saying, you know, they entered the circumcision, but they're not even living like they're supposed to. And the reason why they want to have you circumcised is so that they can glory in your flesh. That's really what it's all about. They want to talk about the fact that you have been circumcised. You know, because that's the big thing. But it goes beyond that. Listen to what he has to say. But God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus, by whom the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. He said, listen, I, God forbid that I should glory in anything else. I don't have time to glory in your flesh. What I'm glorying is in the cross of Jesus Christ. He said, that's what I'm glorying in. I'm glory, glorying in the cross of Jesus Christ by whom this world is crucified to me. It's dead to me. And I'm dead to this world. You hear? I'm dead to this world as well as dead to me. This is what Paul is saying. So you got to become dead to the world system. You got to become dead to the world. 
I have to be dead to the world. And the world has to be dead to me. And the world is going to be dead to you when you walk with God. Because you're not going to see eye to eye. They're not going to understand you. They're not going to understand you. And it's going to be kind of hard for you to understand the world after a while as you walk with the Lord. Say if you ask the Lord to keep your eyes open and remember that that used to be you. All right? Remember from when she came. Not so you can go back, but so you can understand it. Because it does seem to become strange to you as you're walking with the Lord. Because now you're walking in the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness become foreign to you. Uh-huh. You become ambassadors for the kingdom of God. And so therefore, what do you mean? That means that this world is no longer your home. You, you're not comfortable in this world system, in this world. You have a home that is beyond the sky that's waiting on you. Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. Uh-huh. That where I am, there ye may be also. Now, he said, in my father's house are many mansions. And if it were not so, I would have told you. And then he came back and told them that he go to prepare a place for them. That where he is there, um, they would be also. Uh-huh. And he has gone away to prepare that place for you and I. That's our home. The earth is not our home. Heaven is our home. And now we have become ambassadors for Christ. So there is a space here on earth where the kingdom of God rules. And where is that space? That space is in the lives of the people of God. We are the kingdom. We make up the kingdom of God. So when we say thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven, let it be done in this earth. So it can be done on earth through us as it is being done in the heavens. We will obey God like everything in heaven obeys God. We will move according to the will of God like everything in heaven moves according to the will of God. See, that's, that's, that's being, we're, we are in heavenly places, the Bible says. Heaven comes down to earth for the people of God. But one day we will go to heaven. One day when the Lord himself shall appear and come and rapture away his church, then we will go to our heavenly home. Heaven is our home. This is not the child of God's home. And see, we, we have to forever keep that in mind that this world is not my home, so don't become so comfortable in this world because this is not where you belong. Don't be so concerned about the things of this world. These things are going to be left behind. They don't matter all that much that some people put so much into We got to follow after the Lord and not love the world nor the things that are in this world. Let's go to 2 Timothy, the second chapter, verse 1 through 4. And the Bible said, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, Paul talking to Timothy, the same commit thou to faithful men, who shall be able to teach others also. So you got to put it in them, and you know they should be able to teach others also what you put into them. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. So we cannot expect that life is just going to just be easy for us. That life is going to be a flowery bed of roses. All right? We are going to, as Christians, we're going to have to endure some hardness at some times and intervals 
in our lives. He said, endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Now listen, no man that war, because we're in a warfare, it's a spiritual warfare. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places. No man that wharf entangleth himself with the affairs of this life. You cannot get entangled and tied up with the things going on in this world, this world system. You can't get tied into these things. As I said when I, when I first started, as the older people used to say, we have to wear this world as a loose garment. If it's possessions, what you have today, you may not have tomorrow. But will you still be following God? Or will you give up God because you wanted your stuff? What's more important, the kingdom or your stuff? Because we don't know what's going to happen to this stuff down here. This stuff is temporal anyway. But we should be looking toward heaven because heaven is our home. And that's where our real stuff is. This is temporary stuff that God has blessed us with. And sometimes we have to be like Job and say, the Lord gives, the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Sometimes God fixes itself and we go through those type of tests. But will we still be serving God? When you don't have what you want to have, how you want to have it, will you still be serving God? Or are you serving God for the fishes in the loaves. Are you following the Lord. Because of all the blessings. That he's bestowing upon your life. Then, then I would have to ask. Are you really a true follower. Because a true follower. Will follow God. Through the thick and the thin. The ups and the downs. The winds. The rains. The storms. Whatever may come. A true follower will still be serving the Lord. They're not following God. They're following God is not predicated on uh, God just have to do everything that I want him to do and I feel no pain. See, when Job went through his test, Job shaved his head, rent his mantle, and got down and said, Naked came out into the world, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord giveth and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He never changed his mind about who his God was going to be. And he lost so much in one day. Nearly all of his possessions of his cattle and all of that was gone in one day. And then after that, all of his children were gone in one day. And then after that, his body is stricken with boils from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. He's agony. He is in pain. He's in emotional pain. He's in physical pain. He's in uh, he's in uh, he's emotional in pain. He's in physical pain. He's in mental pain. You know, as he's going through. But what he doesn't do is let go of his God. Mm -hmm. Because he was not in love with the world, nor the things that were in the world. And he was okay. He was willing to lose those things, but yet still serve his God. And see, this is where the devil was wrong when he told the Lord, does Job serve thee for naught? For nothing. I mean, you got to hedge about everything that he has. And he said, but you know, if you move the hedge, I'll make him curse you to your face. And for people who 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 just want to have the hedge and never want to go through anything, if God ever moves the hedge, they're the ones that's not going to be saved. That's not going to serve God because they're serving Him only because of 
But see, you have to serve him in spite of. Not because of, but in spite of. Not because everything you want is going the way you want it to go. But in spite of it going totally opposite to the way you would want it to go. And that's because you love God more than you love the world and the things that are in this world. And so you're willing to give God your all no matter what. It's not predicated on you having this, that, and the other. And thank God for the blessings that he bestow upon all of us. But if he doesn't give us those things, what will we do? Sometimes God pull back some things to just try us to see, well, are you going to serve me the same way you've been serving me all along? What if you have to go through a situation where you it's cold? The winter is on its way. And maybe you don't have the money to, to, to fill your home or whatever the case may be. What happens if your gas and electric does get cut off? What happens if you do have to move out of your house? Will you still be serving the Lord? Or is it predicated on him making sure that nothing goes the way you don't want it to go? Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. We got to make sure that we're not loving this world, nor this world system. We got to be careful of that. You understand? Be thankful for the blessings. But don't have to have it. Whether you have it or not, have a mindset, have a heart that I don't care. I'm going to serve God because he is what means the most to me. He means the most. So no man warp, that warp entangled of himself with the fans of this life. And this is why, that he may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier. If we get tangled up in the things of this world, we won't be able to please God. You can't even get hooked up into your family like that. Anything can happen. You don't know what's going to happen from today or tomorrow. You got to be hooked up into God. God forbid, you know, but things do happen to our family member. People do die. You know, we don't want it, but it happens. God knows I never wanted my mother to die. I'm going to tell you the truth. That was one of the things that I used to pray to the Lord about. I never wanted my mother to die. But you know what? She did. She died. But I didn't stop serving God because my mother died. He's my mother and my father. He's whatever you need. Listen. Are you going to stop serving God because a loved one passed away? My mother passed away. My father passed away. My grandmother has passed away. Some uncles have passed away. Aunt passed away. Cousin passed away. But God hasn't passed away. You know, I'm talking about some dear people that was in my life. These people were very dear to me. Even to today, at times, I still cry over my mother. You understand what I'm saying? My mother's death. But I'm not going around just crying all the time. I am not. I'm not doing that. Thank God for that. You know, I'm not doing that. But there are times when your mind goes back and you remember your mother. And it brings tears to your eyes. There's nothing wrong with that. That's grief. That's somebody that you was very connected to. Or your father. Somebody you was very connected to. So those are painful events. But no matter how painful the event may be. Do you love God more? So you have to, have, you have to love God more than any and everybody. Anything. Anyone. 
so that if something was to happen, you're still going to be serving God. And you're not going to accuse God falsely. Job held on to his integrity. He held on to it. The devil wanted him to curse God to his face. And the devil even used his wife, somebody that was very close to him. See, the devil will use the closest person to you if he can. To try to destroy you. To try to make you get out of the will of God. But you got to love God even more than you love that person that's the closest to you. And if something happens concerning that person, you got to be willing to serve God and say no to them. That's what got Adam in trouble. Eve got Adam in trouble. She gave that fruit to him, but he knew he wasn't supposed to eat it, but he did it. But when Job's wife tried to pull that on him and say, curse God and die, he said, what are you talking about? You sound like a foolish woman to me. He said, the Lord has given unto us, the Lord has blessed. And shall not we also receive, shall we not receive evil or whatever the case may be? I'm not cursing God. You think we're only supposed to have good and not have any bad? God's going to let us have both. You're going to have some good and you're going to have some bad. You're going to have some ups and you're going to have some downs. You're going to have some ins and you're going to have some outs. Everything is not going to be wonderful and lovely and yeah, 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 yeah. Where you're laughing and just running all over the place. Sometimes you're going to hang your head down low and you're going to cry. Some tears, sometimes you're going to have some hurts and you're going to have some wounds. You're going to have some pains. But yes, you're going to have some laughing and you're going to have some joy and you're going to have some great times in life. But you're going to have both. But can you serve God when both happens? You know, it's easy to, oh yeah, I'm serve God. It's good. Everything's good. But what happens when just about everything's bad? Can you still say it's good? Because it really is. Because all things work together for the good. To them that love God. And to them that are the called. According to his purpose. Excuse me. So it's just working for our good. We got to love not the world. Neither the things that are in the world. Amen, amen, amen. Let's go back to our scripture. Let's go back to our scripture in 1 John. I feel like I'm in church now. I need a man. Ooh. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Now listen to this. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. So let's talk about that. Let's go to Matthew, the 16th chapter, verse Matthew, the 16th chapter, verse 24 to 26. And it says, Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, first of all, and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. Whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what is a man profited? 
If he shall gain the what? The whole world. You want everything in this world? What is it going to profit you if you gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? What, what can you give in exchange for your soul? You only have one. And are you willing to sell, well, some people are, willing to sell your soul so that you can have the possessions of this world? Because remember, these things are going to perish and they're going to pass away and you cannot take them with you. But your soul is going to live eternally somewhere. All right? So let's think about it. This is time, and time is a short, it's brief. Eternity is forever and ever and ever and ever, ever, all right? Infinity, it's forever. You can't even imagine it because you, you, you just don't, can't phantom it in this brain here, okay? But here you have eternity, all right? You have, you, you have Eternity. This is eternity. There's a big old circle here. You have eternity. Okay? Eternity. And then you have this little pin inside of eternity, which is time. This little thing here, this little bit of time, compared to this. And so... In this little bit of time, you want to get as much as you want to get and forfeit this here, eternity. Because if you, you want the world and you love the world, you get what the world has to offer you. But when you go into eternity, you can't take none of this that the world gave you. So now you have nothing. You have nothing. You understand? Now you don't have the things of God because you got the things of the world. You got the things of the world. You love them things more. Now don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with having things and stuff. But it's something wrong with the things and stuff having you. All right? And it is something wrong with you getting things the wrong way. It is something wrong with you loving these things that you get in this time. All right? Above God. Something wrong with that. Okay? So you get what you want in time. And you're not worried about eternity. It does not matter that you're not worried about eternity. Because time is inside of eternity. After a while, this ceases. Time will be no more. Now you're in eternity. Everything that was in time that you had is gone. If you didn't get Jesus, if you don't have Jesus, you don't have anything. And hell is going to be your portion. And you mean to tell me, you're going to forfeit eternity for this little bit of stuff? You need to tell the devil to get his bags and leave. Tell him to pack his bags and go somewhere else. That's what you need to tell the devil. Because his stuff is not worth it. It's not worth it. Because whether you want to go in eternity or not, you're going. Everybody's going into eternity. Now you can go into eternity in a life state. Or you can go into eternity in a death state. If you're in sin and you go into eternity, it's a death state. But you will, you will still be alive, but yet dead, spiritually dead. All right? Because you're going to live forever. Everybody lives forever. Soul doesn't die. Your soul doesn't die. And it's going somewhere. It's going wherever you made preparations for it to go while you were in time. Uh-huh. While you were in time. So that's why we have to choose. We have to choose in time how we're going to spend our eternity. 
And my recommendation to you is this. Don't be so concerned about what you get here in this time. Now go get things. Get things, you understand? Live your life. Be the best you can. Do the best you can. May the Lord bless you. Because it is his good pleasure that you will have, even in this life. All right? He's not against it. I'm not against it. Nice things are nice things. I like nice things too. All right? But I'm not so concerned about the nice things. That if I have to give up nice things so I can have Jesus, I will give up the nice things so I can have Jesus. I know how it is not to have nice things. Mm -hmm. Now some people don't know how it is not to have nice things. I know how it is not to have not to, not to have nice things. Paul said that he had learned that in all things, in all things, for to be content. I know how it is to have. And how it is to not have. I know how it is to have nice things. And I know how it is not to have nice things. And I served him in both situations. Oh yes. I served him in both situations. And you would have never known. You would have never known. Because my servitude to the Lord. Never changed. Because it's not about the things and the stuff. It's not about getting the world or being worldly. It's not about the fleshly things. It's about the eternal things. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Let's move on to Luke the, tw Luke the 12th chapter. Verse 16 to 21. And we're going to look at somebody who wanted the world so bad. They were so into their worldly game. Twelve chapter, verse 16 to 21. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. Jesus is talking. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do because I have no room where to bestow my fruits? And he said, This what I do. I will pull down my bonds and build greater. And then will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul. Thou has much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease. Eat, drink, and be merry. Like, oh, woo. Saying to his soul, take, eat, drink, and be merry. Sit back, relax. You got it made, in other words. I will take key. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then shall then who shall those things be which thou hast provided? Who's it going to go to? Because you can't take it with you. Remember that. You cannot take your stuff with you. You're not taking your bank account. You're not taking your car. You're not taking your house. You're not taking all your clothing. You're not taking all that jewelry. You're not taking their makeup. You're not taking any of that with you. So is he that left up treasures for himself and is not rich toward God. You got all this treasure, earthly treasure. Store it up. And uh, there's nothing against having treasure. But when you're forgetting about God and you have your treasure, early treasure, it is going to profit you nothing. So is he that is rich in this world, but is not rich toward God. Your soul is going to be required of you. You wanted so much of the worldly things and you left God out. What happens when your soul is required of you? 
You done saved and saved and saved and saved and saved. And you know what? You're more than likely going to leave it to somebody that's going to run right through it. Here you was frugal. You held on to your stuff tight. Like they said, you would make a dollar holler. That's how tight you was. All right? You didn't want to give like God wanted you to give. But you don't have to give like God wants you to give because God's going to, when he just takes you on away, all your stuff that you had that you wouldn't give will be going here, there, and everywhere. And the person that, that is given to is not going to hold on to it like you held on to it. You need to be rich toward God. That's more important. And again, there's nothing wrong with having things and stuff. And you should save. That is biblical. You should save. But Jesus digs in and he deals with these things. You know, and, and he's really trying to get our minds so focused on, focus on the things of heaven more than the things that's down here on the earth and basically trying to tell us, listen, you don't need to be so worried about that stuff. God, for one, is going to make sure that you're taking care of you both do the things that you're supposed to now to make sure that you're taken care of. He's giving you the health, the life, and the strength, and he gives you the power to even get well. That's the Bible. But don't go after that and leave God out because it's not going to profit you anything. Because one day you're going into eternity and you're going to leave this time behind. This stuff is going to be here. And it will not have been worth it. It will not have been worth leaving God out so you can get it. Some people getting it by hook, getting it by crook. They just want it so bad. They lying. They mistreating people. You know, they, they conniving. They deceitful. You know, also they can gain Worldly possessions and worldly things and this, that, and the other. Sometimes trying to gain people. They're more concerned about all of that than they are about the God of glory, their creator. They're loving this world. Some people just hooked up into wrong. They love doing wrong. They love it. Help us, Lord. Let's move on to Matthew's chapter 6. Matthew's chapter 6, verse 19 to 21. And Jesus got in this and he said, lay not up treasure for yourselves upon earth in this world, you know. Where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt and where thieves do not break through and nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. And basically he said, don't be so concerned about storing up things on the earth. You're more concerned about storing up things on the earth than you are about storing up things in heaven. Toward God. That's not a good thing. Now here, more corrupts, things get rusty, thieves break through still, they break in your houses, they break in your cars, you know, people see something that, that they want, you have it, they want it, they steal it, they knocking people over their head, you know, to get their possessions, to take your pocketbook, you know, to, to take your car, they, they holding guns on you, you know, this, this is the world that we live in. That people are willing to take your life so that they can just get, get a worldly possession. That's the mindset of the world system. If I don't have it, I'll take it from somebody else. 
If I don't have it and I want it, I'll just take it. How ungodly is that when the person has worked to get what they have gotten and what they have achieved, and now you're going to take their life for a possession? Something that has no life in it. Think about it. A car doesn't have life. So you're going to take their car, and nine times out of ten, all you're going to do is you're going to go joy riding in the car or whatever the case may be. You're not going to get to keep the car. And you done killed this person so that you can take their car. For what? Senseless murder. Because you love this world. You love the things that are in this world. So you're going to take somebody away from their family. You're taking a mother away from their children. You're taking a father away from his children. And you're making the entire family suffer. All because you wanted something that was a worldly possession. And life was not as valuable to you than a worldly possession. Look at where the devil has gotten us. Love not the world. Neither the things that are in the world. And we have to be very careful. Because the enemy can sneak into things, sneak in. And you, you'll find yourself loving things more than you loving the will, the will of God. Going after things more than you're going after the will of God. Six chapter verse 19 to 21. So I, I read that. So now I'm going to go on to Colossians. Let's go to Colossians, the third chapter. The third chapter, verse 1. To two, third chapter, verse one to two. <clears throat> if you then be risen with Christ, seek those things where Christ sit upon the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth. See, that's why our affections need to be on things above, not on things on the earth. We can't be so concerned with the things on the earth that we really have just negated the things that are above. The things are above are more important. Not to everybody though, unfortunately. Because there are some people who this world and its goods and its things about it, the world system that caters to our flesh is more important to them than the righteousness of God. Let's go back to 1 John, 2nd chapter. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Verse 16. For all that is in the world. Now he's going to get into that. The lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. When you see that you have these things in you, if I see that I have these things in me, I have to realize, you have to realize that this is not of God. It is of the world. The lust of the flesh. So he hit that first. Number one is the lust of the flesh on in this list. The lust of the flesh. Let's go to Romans the 8th chapter. That's a part of the world. The lust of your flesh is worldly. The flesh want worldly stuff. Romans the 8th chapter. Your flesh want it, my flesh want it. And you got to deny your flesh. The scripture that I read earlier on, it said, if you're coming to the Lord, you must 
first deny yourself. We have got to deny our flesh. We've got to tell our flesh no. You've got to tell your flesh you are not going to fulfill yourself. I'm not about the worldly system. I'm not living in the worldly system. I'm living in the godly system, the righteous system. I have been transformed and I'm not going to conform. Romans the 8th chapter. And it's actually going to be verses 1 through 14. Romans 8th chapter. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. That's a lot of people stop right there. Like that's the end of the scripture. It is not, there is a comma. Therefore you simply pause and keep on moving. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So if you're walking after the flesh, there is condemnation to you. All right? Don't stop at the, don't stop right there. There's therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. No, it's going to specify who walk not after the flesh. Those who walk not after the flesh, there is no condemnation to them. But if you're walking after the flesh, there is condemnation to you. You have to walk not after the flesh, but you have to walk after the Spirit of God. For there not to be condemnation. And it's time out for that. They just keep throwing that scripture out there. Throwing it out there. There's no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. Finish it. Finish it. It's just like you can say, um, everybody on the job is going to get a bonus that do their work. But you just stopping that everybody on the job is going to get a bonus. No, everybody's not going to get a bonus. The ones that do their work, that do their work. And that's what is going on here. There is no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Don't stop at that. There's no period there. There is a comma, which simply says pause, and then you keep going. That's not the end of the sentence. It doesn't stop there. It tells you who, it, who it's talking about. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus have made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh. God, sending his own son, and the likeness of sinful flesh, likeness, but his flesh wasn't sinful, but the likeness, and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. See, the righteousness of the Lord needs to be fulfilled in us. We need to carry out the righteousness of the Lord. Who walk not after the flesh. We cannot walk after the flesh. If we walk after the flesh, we are not going to carry out the righteousness of the law. And remember, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. For all that's in the world, the lust of the flesh the lust of the eye, the pride of life, the lust of the flesh. Wanting to cater to flesh. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Listen, for they that are after the flesh. If you're after your flesh, if you're going to walk in the lust of your flesh. They that are after the flesh. Do mind the things of the flesh. You're going to do the things of the flesh. You're going to mind the things of the flesh. You're concerned with the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. When, when you have a desire to the spirit of God, you're going to do the things that, that the spirit does. Listen, for to be calmly minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Your flesh is carnal minded. My, my flesh is carnal minded. But we have to learn to walk in the spirit so that we can be spiritually minded. 
Keep your mind on the things of God. Ha let that transformation take place in your mind. Love not the world. For the for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. A carnal mind, your car, a carnal mind, a fleshly mind, is not subject to the law of God. And it can't be. It's carnal. That's why we have to be spiritual minded. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. When you get into your flesh, you can't please God. You working with the world system then. You flow on how the world flow. They curse you out, you curse them back out. You hit, they hit you, you hit them. They kill your dog, you want to kill their cat. That's the flesh. That's the world system. That's how they operate. That's how that's how you think when you think when you in the world. You think like that. But you got to have a transformation of the mind. And the transformation of the mind says, love them that hate you. Do good to them that use you. Things like that. Now you know that's not the mind of the flesh because the mind of the flesh says, I'm going to get you if you get me or I'm going to get you before you get me. That's of the world. That's the world system. We used to walk in that system. But now being brought over into the system of the Lord, we're no longer supposed to walk in that system. We're now supposed to walk in the light of the word of God. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if so be that the spirit of God dwells in you, now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. You don't belong to him, and he don't belong to you. You need to get his spirit. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh. You don't owe your flesh nothing. I don't owe my flesh nothing. Not to the flesh to live after the flesh. I am not in debt to live after this. This is trying to take me to hell. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. Why? Because the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. But if ye live through the Spirit... But if ye through the Spirit do mortify, do kill, out, do mortify the deeds of the body, kill that stuff, kill it, kill it, kill it, ye shall live. We got to kill out those things that the flesh want. It's deeds, which are things that are ungodly and things that God is not pleased with. We got to kill those things out. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. And if you're being led by your flesh, you ain't, you're not being led by the Spirit of God. If you want to be the son of God, then you need to allow the Spirit of God to do the leading. Let's go to Galatians, the fifth chapter. And when we get into this, I don't, I don't, I don't think we're probably going to get all the way through that. But let's go. Galatians, the fifth chapter. But I, I went pretty far. I went pretty far. Love not the world. Hold on to Galatians, the fifth chapter. And let us go back to 1 John. And second chapter. All right. And back to that 16th verse. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, 
and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. All right? Let's go back and go on to Galatians, that fifth chapter, starting at verse 14. All right, so he goes on to say, For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Now, each individual needs to critique themselves when it comes down to this particular scripture. Thy, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Easier said than done. We need to really think whether or not we're fulfilling this scripture. Are we really loving our neighbor as we love ourselves? Do we really treat our neighbor as we would want to treat ourselves? Help us, Lord. Love thy neighbor as thyself. But if ye bite and devour one another, take heed. That ye be not consumed one of another. Listen, we should not go after one another's throat. We should not be doing all this bickering and this fighting and having dissension and contention and just all the stuff going on as the people of God. We should not be doing all of this. Absolutely not. And if you bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one another. Because we can end up destroying each other. Really destroying each other. Can't afford to let the devil get in. And we're destroying each other. That's not of God. That's a worldly way of living. This I say then, walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. If you walk in the Spirit of God, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. You will not do the things of the flesh. You will not cater to that thing that's of the world. You won't give in to all that's in the world, the lust of the flesh. The flesh wants, the flesh wants, the flesh wants. If you walk in the Spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit. It wants stuff that the spirit don't want. And the spirit against the flesh. The spirit wants what the flesh don't want. And these are contrary to one to the other. So that you cannot do the things that you would. But if you be led of the spirit. Ye are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are these are manifest. These things are the works of the flesh. The works of the flesh are manifest. Which are these? Adultery. Mm -hmm. This is of the flesh. This is of the world. Sleeping with somebody's wife or somebody's husband. Husband sleeping with somebody that's not, not your wife. Wife sleeping with somebody that's not your husband. Committing adultery. It is of the flesh. Therefore, it is of the world. The world says, do what you want to do. If it feels good, do it. That's the world system. It doesn't, it's not so concerned of the fact that this is outside of the will of God. The Bible says let every man have his own wife and let every woman have her own husband. And this is to avoid fornication, which is the next thing that's coming up. So that you won't just be going around here just having sex with whoever. 
You need to have your own wife. You need to have your own husband. And if you don't have a wife and you don't have a husband, you ought not to be doing it. Amen. You need to hold off on that. Until you get married to somebody. And then when you marry somebody, that's the only person that you should be doing this with. And God made sex. So sex is not a bad thing. It's a good thing. God made it. And he made it so that it would be enjoyed. But with married people only. Married people. Not unmarried people. And not people that you're not married to. Even if it's a married person with another married person. If you're not married to the person, you have no business being with that person in that manner. That's worldliness. That's the lust of the flesh. Flesh just wants anything that looks good. Anything that seems good. If it looks good, the flesh wants it. If it seems good, the flesh wants it. If it feels good, the flesh wants it. Doesn't care whether it's right or whether it's wrong, the flesh wants it. It's of the world. Love not the world, neither the things that are of the world. All that's in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. These things are of the world. And remember, if any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. You cannot love God and the devil too. Uh-uh. You got to love the one, the Bible says, and hate the other. Love the one and hate the other. Love the one and hate the other. Now listen to this. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are, and we we'll go again, adultery, fornication, unlawful mixing, and that's somebody that you, you're not married, you, you're doing your thing. And it can also be a married person with an unmarried person. It's fornication and adultery. And then there is spiritual fornication, unlawful mixing. You serving the true and living God, and then you go with somebody that's serving an idol God to wherever they go serve their God. That's fornication. That's spiritual fornication. Uncleanness, moral uncleanness, lewd, offensive in a sexual way. Mm -hmm. Uncleanness. Provocative. Uncleanness. Doing things with your body that ought not to be done in public. Uncleanness. Dancing on that pole. Uncleanness. Stripping so that everybody can see you. Uncleanness. That's of the world. The world like it. They go there. They go there. They pay. They pay when they get. They put money up. They pay to get in. They put money in 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 this, you know, in the streams and all of that. They pay. They pay. They pay. They pay. See, people don't mind paying to please their flesh. They'll give. For the things of the world, but for the things of God, they want to be stingy. Or they want to say, all oh, the church, so all they want is money, 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 money. And then somebody said, well, what do they want when you want you to strip joint? They wanted your money. The church is not about getting just getting your money. They want your soul saved, but it takes money to run a church as well. It just doesn't happen because you say, how do you thank you, Jesus? It takes money to run a church and to do ministry. It takes money to do things. 
And that is something, isn't it? When you think about it. The people that will complain concerning the things of God and to give to the things of God did not complain really about the things that catered to their flesh and to the world. If they complain, they're still doing it. A carton of cigarettes is Lord knows how much now. I think you're probably paying like $27 for it. But you still buying it. Because you want to smoke. It's of the world. You want to smoke though. So you're going to buy it. You're going to pay. People are going to pay. I don't care how much. If they want to do something. Them cigarettes are still selling. Oh yes they are. Because somebody love the world. And they want them cigarettes. Because that cigarette is doing something for them. So they pay. You, you want to get some liquor? You go pay. You go to the bar and you get your liquor. You pay. You know it. You go get bottles and bottles. Cases. And you pay. We pay to send ourselves to hell. Think about it. You pay your own way to go to hell. The worldly system that's catering to the things of the world, to the flesh, because the flesh likes that stuff. Love not the world. Ugly. Lasciviousness. Excessive lust. You're not just lustful. But you greedy lustful. You know, there's some people that they greedy lustful. They have the greed for it. They don't, they cannot get enough of it. They just reeking with it. It's just running out of their pores. And there were some of us before the Lord saved us. Just reeking with sin. Sometimes you 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 know you'll go to a store or something, and I, I know I've I've been I've experienced this on more than one occasion. You're in the store, you just minding your business, you're trying to get what you're getting, and then you have somebody that's just looking at you, just like that. If wasn't nobody else around, they would probably rape you or something. Excessive lust. It has really gotten out of hand. And people get excessive lust and they're just so lustful. And that's why they will mess with a child. They will mess with animals. Because it's so much lust that is running over in them. Perversion. They cannot get enough. Pornography. Of the world. All of this is in the world and it is the flesh. It's of the flesh. The flesh. The flesh. And this stuff sells. People pay for it. They're paying for things. It would shut down the prostitution if people weren't paying. People paying. And they've been paying forever and a day. And they still gonna keep on paying. Because the lust of the flesh. People they don't even know. They don't know whether they have the disease or not. But they go in after it. I've seen, I have seen women standing on the street. That look real, real bad. They look like they have disease. But somebody hollering for them. They pulling these people because they want flesh. Their flesh desires. They're lascivious. Love not the world. All this in the world. All this in the world. And if you're not careful, it comes right into the church system, the church arena. You have people in the church arena that's like this. They won't get rid of the stuff. They won't get rid of it. It's one thing to come to Jesus as you are, but it's another thing to stay the way you are. 
Now, he did not want you to stay where you are. He want to change you. He want to transform you. So nobody's looking down and saying, uh, 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 because we all were in the world. We were all born in sin and shaping in iniquity. Nobody escaped that. But it's time out for being hypocrites and being phony. You're going to live for God or you're not going to live for God. You're either going to do right or you're going to do wrong. What are you going to do? Make your mind up. Make up your mind and do it. Stay away from the lust of the flesh. It's not good and it's not beneficial. Fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, idol worshiping idol gods. Anything you put before God is an idol. Witchcraft. You know that's not of God. You know it's just not of God. It's not of God. It's not of God. You dibbing and dabbling, trying to get spells and all that kind of stuff. That's of the devil. But it's of the flesh, though. It's a part of the flesh. The flesh is just a mess. Hatred. 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 Can't stand people. And they have the image of God. They are the image of God. God said that we are supposed to love people because he loves people. Yes, you may get angry and upset with people, but you don't have a right to hate people. Variance. Quarreling, contention, strife. People that like to argue all the time and all of that. Like, always got to have an argument. For what? That's of the flesh. Some people like arguing. That's of the flesh. If you're an argumentative person that you got to argue over everything, that's of the flesh. It is not of the spirit. The Holy Ghost don't act like that. That's you getting in the flesh. And you're not supposed to be being in the flesh. God is saying to us, Love not the world. That's a worldly system. That's the way the world acts. That's a part of the world system. Emulations. Jealousy. Envy. Effort to match or su to surpass a person or achievement. Typically by imitation. So you're, 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 you're trying to do what somebody else does. Or you got a mindset, I got to be better than them. And you know, you jealous of them. And you got envy of them. And you got to be better than them. So you're going to try to do better than them. You're going to try to outdo them. Or you're going to try to outdo being them. You know, some people try to outdo being you. They try to do you and be better at doing you than you. What kind of crazy stuff is that? You can't be somebody else. You can't be nobody else. You're going to say what they say, do what they do, act the way they act, and think that you're going to be more accepted than the person because you're doing what they do. You're trying to overthrow the person. So you're trying to take their identity onto yourself. That's impossible. How are you going to take somebody else's identity? you got to be you, honey. You will not be somebody at being themselves. That's just crazy and ridiculous. Emulation. That's flesh. That's flesh. That's of the world. You have that type of spirit. Oh, I can do it better. I'm going to do it better. You got the world in you. You got the world in you. And it doesn't matter whether you huck a much under it or not. It doesn't matter. You can fall out and pass out on the floor 15 times. You're worldly. Wrath. All this anger, wanting to lash, the lash out. You know, you want, you want to get physical even with the situation. And strike. Seditions. Disunion. Division. Turn things apart. 
coming in between friendships, trying to turn churches apart, always stirring up something, always against us, never trying to be for a thing, when we're supposed to be united. That's of the world. The world does those kind of things. Running over here, whisperers, whispering, lying. Trying to put stuff in people's spirit against somebody else. And a lot of times against leadership and things like that. That's of the devil. Paul came in on one accord, one occasion and said, look, y'all around here talking about, I'm going to go Paulus, I'm going to Cephas, I'm a Paul. We ain't die for y'all. None of us die for you. How you going to have your special pits from the body of Christ? We are all the servants of Christ. We got to think about that. Heresies, which, are, which is false doctrine. In the end, you, you hate a person because of what they have, and you want to have it. So you envy them. You mistreat them. Can't really treat them like they're supposed to be treated because you have envy in your spirit. That's of the flesh. Murders. And it's more than one way to murder somebody because you can murder somebody with your mouth. Putting your mouth on them. Messing up their reputation. Can never mess up their character because they are who they are. But you can mess up somebody's reputation. You can kill their reputation. That's that's of the devil. That's of the flesh. Drunkenness. Getting drunk. Mm-hmm. Reveling. Uh-huh. Drunk and all of that. Running here, running there. Honey. Just parting it up. And such light of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past. That they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Now that's rough right there. They which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Lord have mercy, help us, Father, because we need some help. If we're going to do these worldly things, we're not going to inherit the kingdom of God. You ain't going to heaven any way. And I'm not going to have any oh how either. We're going to have to cut this fleshly stuff out. That stuff got to go. It has got to go. Love not the world, neither things that are in the world. Amen. And I'm probably still not finished with this because, you know, a lot that I haven't gotten into. So I'll probably be back with you on next week's Bible class um, talking about loving not the world. Amen. Amen. So at this time, I'm going to ask if you will. Um, be a blessing to the ministry and go to Giblify, uh, find the Giblify app and make your donations. All right, to the ministry, amen, and God does love a cheerful giver. Hallelujah, I'm going to say the word of prayer for you while you're um, doing your giving. All right, please be a blessing. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you. Thank you, Lord, for all that you have done, that that you shall do. We ask that you will move in the lives of the people. Oh, God, I pray that they have heard the words of God, that they have grasped a hold of them, and that they will be determined to hide that word in their heart, that they may not sin against thee. Oh, God, and that they will not love the world nor the things that are in the world. Oh, God, the fleshly things. Oh, God, the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. They are of the world, and they are not of thee. I pray, Lord, that their hearts will be changed, those that have a hardened heart toward the word of God, that still have the decision to walk according to their flesh, that you will touch their hearts and that you will change their hearts, O oh God, and that you will give them a heart of flesh and move out the stony heart. O oh God, and we ask that you will bless, heal, and deliver, that you will save souls in Jesus' name. Amen. Remember, we love you. But God loves you best. Be blessed.